before we start this video, a large thank you to Yari, Cody, Jennifer, Demetrius, Zach, Laradom, Graham, Unlimited Riceworks, Josiah, Sorokin, Santiago, Link, Anthony, Corey, Ridefort, Chris, and Navtech for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello everybody, today we're going to add Sprint to the project, so first I'm going to clean up my folder here by dragging my scripts into the scripts folder, then I'm going to open my player controls. I'm going to start by making a new action, I'm going to call it Sprint, and I'm going to make the action type a pass-through. So just over here, action type from button to pass-through, the control type can stay as button. I'm going to add an interaction, the interaction is going to be hold, and this just basically means you have to hold the button at the specified hold time listed here before this becomes active. I'm going to set the binding to the east button on the gamepad because I'm using a controller. If you want, you can add an additional binding like so, and then you can set it to something on the keyboard like the shift key, for example. But I'm not going to do that because I'm only using the controller in this project, so I'm going to keep it as such. So I'm going to close that and save it. Next, I'm going to navigate to the player input manager. Now we just set up our input on this side of things. So right below the dodge input, I'm going to make a serializable field, bool sprint input. I'm going to initialize it at false as it begins at false when the game starts. Down here on the on enable, I'm going to copy the dodge input and paste it as I normally would, but we're going to do something slightly different this time. Uh, we're going to change this to sprint, obviously, and we're going to change dodge input to sprint input, but we're going to copy and paste this again. And instead of using dot performed, we're going to use dot canceled. So as you would assume from the name, this is triggered when the button is canceled, we're going to change sprint input to false. So when you let go of the button, so I'll make a comment here, holding the input action or activates the sprint dot performs. So the sprint input would change to true. So it activates the bull. I'll, I'll say sets the bull to true is probably a better way to say it. And if you release the input, it changes the bull to false because the canceled effect activates. So basically, you hold the button, the bull is true, you release the button, the bull is false. Very simple, very straightforward. So down here below handle dodge input, I'm going to say handle sprinting. I'm going to open up my curly bracers and just say if sprint input, then we want to write some pseudo code here. We want to basically handle sprinting from the player locomotion manager. So let's go and make a function for that, or at least make the shell of a function for that. Let's open our player locomotion manager, because again, you're only going to be controlling sprinting from the player's perspective. So we're going to say public void handle sprinting. Now let's go back to the input manager and just say player dot player locomotion manager dot handle sprinting, just like that. And we should also call handle sprinting here under handle all inputs. Otherwise the input will never be registered or the input will be registered, but you'll never actually call this function. Okay, so that's all set up now. We can begin writing some actual logic. So let's save that and navigate back to the player locomotion manager. And let's say if player dot is performing action return, because we don't want to be able to sprint if we're already doing something. This is true for any action. You don't want to sprint while you're doing anything else. You can't be doing anything while you want to sprint. So we'll set sprinting to false and then we can return. We can write some pseudo code here right below this and say if we're at a stamina, we want to set spreading to false and return again. And then lastly, we can write another line and we can say if we are moving, then we want to set spreading to true. And if we're stationary, we want to set it to false. You don't want to have a sprinting enabled if you're standing in one place. All right, so we have to have a flag now of such to determine if we are sprinting or not for multiple reasons. One, we have to sync this across the network. So this has to be a network variable because the other player has to know if you're sprinting, so you can be playing sprinting animations on their end. So let's go to the character network manager, and then right below the animator, I'm going to make a header. I'm going to call this flags. And then I'm going to make a bool, a network variable, of course. And I'm going to call this is sprinting. So we do this by saying public network variable, and we open up these bracket things and say bool. And we say is sprinting is equal to new network variable bool. I'm going to initialize it at false. And then we just copy the same uh, variable read permissions and write permissions as any other variable we've made so far. So everyone can read it, only the owner can write it. So basically we're gonna change this. And if you change a network variable, it changes for everybody. So let's say player dot 
player network manager and we have to call that because we don't have a call on our player manager so let's navigate to the player manager and declare a player network manager variable let's hide it in the inspector because we don't need to see it but it needs to be accessible from this class because as we said before this is the class that you access all components of the player so let's on a wake say player network manager is equal to get component player network manager because this rests on the same game object as this script now back over here on the player locomotion manager we say if we are performing an action player dot player network manager dot sprinting value dot value is equal to false you have to say dot value that's very important okay so if we're performing action we disable our sprinting right away now we can do this, these two immediately too. So if we are moving, set sprinting to true. Now there's a few ways to do this. I'm gonna make it so it has to be over 0 0.5 in the movement. So if you're tiptoeing, uh, well, I lock my movement anyway to 0 0.5 or one, but if you don't have it locked and you're tiptoeing, this would basically not register as true. So I'm gonna say greater or equal than 0 0.5, and that's just preference. Otherwise, set it to false. If you want to, you can just say if the move amount is, um, basically zero or less than zero, you can just set it to false. So I'm gonna say if we are moving, or you can say even moving a little, uh, sprinting is true. Otherwise, if we're stationary or not moving enough, sprinting is false. Very simple, very straightforward. Okay, I'm gonna save that now. I'm also gonna make a comment here saying that if we're slowly moving, if you have that set up that way, then you can't sprint. You wanna sprint when you're basically just at least running. So under the handle grounded movement, very simple. All we do is say if player dot player network manager dot is sprinting dot value. That means like if we are sprinting and this value is true, then we want to do some logic. Otherwise, just do our normal logic. So we can copy everything we made in the previous video here and just put it in the else statement. So if we're sprinting, we apply one speed. And if we're not sprinting, we just apply our normal move amount speeds. So we can say player dot character controller dot move move direction times sprint or sprinting speed, which is a variable we have to make. So let's go up here in the movement settings, copy any of these uh, movement speed variables, paste it and change the name to sprinting speed. And again, these are values you want to play around with, especially depending on your animations. It's going to be different depending on how fast you want the game to feel. Now, if I go into the project here, you can see there's a problem. So if I go to hit the sprint button, you can see the I just perform a roll and then it syncs up after and the sprinting turns to true afterwards. But we don't want to have roll uh, as a mandatory thing when you try to sprint. So we'll go to the roll or the dodge input rather and just add an interaction for tap. Now, what does this do? Well, you have to tap the button quickly to perform a dodge now and for sprinting you have to hold. So if I go back in the game now and go into the project as normal, in order to perform a roll, I tap the button like so. Well, I'll highlight my player so you can see first. So I'll tap the button, that's a roll. Now if I Hold it, you can see, I'll sprint. Now we still have a problem. The is sprinting bool never resets. So let's fix that right now. But now the role is no longer competing with the sprint for that input specifically. Now let's go over to the player input manager. And let's go down here for handle sprinting. And we're gonna say if sprint input, then what we normally have else player dot player network manager dot is sprinting dot value is equal to false. And you might be wondering why we're not doing is owner checks for this stuff. It's because you're never going to access some of these functions if you're not the owner because it's the way we have it set up. So let's go to the player animator manager now, uh, or sorry, the character animator manager. I messed that up. I forgot it's on the base class. Basically, we need to go over updating our animator parameters. Now, we're going to do a couple things here. First, I'm going to say if, or simply, I'll show this example first. You could say if the character is sprinting by referencing the character network manager like so. So this is a valid way to do it too. If sprinting dot value is true, then you would apply your different uh, animated parameters. Else, you could apply the normal ones here by copying these and put them in here. And this is a valid way to do it. I am instead going to make this function require a bool to check if we are sprinting. So I'm just going to put that back to normal here. And I'm going to make a bool right here for is sprinting. This is obviously going to give us an error where we normally call it because now it needs a new parameter, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and then I'm going to say if is sprinting, we're going to do something. And if we're not sprinting, this line of code is never ran. So we're not gonna do this thing. Now I am going to copy and paste these two lines of code here. And I'm going to delete them from up here and paste them below the is sprinting threshold. So just down here. And now above this, I am going to make two variables, float horizontal 
and then I'm going to say that's equal to horizontal movement. And then likewise, I'm going to put the horizontal down here where the horizontal movement is. And then I'm going to do the same thing for vertical. And I'm going to put the vertical down here where vertical movement is. Okay. So then we're going to say, if we are sprinting, the vertical is equal to two. That's it. So it just changes the vertical just here. I just like doing it this way. It's just a preference again. Uh, do what makes mo the most sense to you and is the neatest to you. So if we go into our um, blend tree now, you can see the vertical is what controls our forward movement and our sprinting. So this is two, this is maxed out, and this is one. You can see the animation changes. And again, I'm using the straight sword animation set for this video. Uh, I'll link it on screen now if you want to get it, and the link is in the description. So before we're, we had these uh, vertical and horizontal variables made here, but never did anything with them. I'm going to show you what they were for and how you can use them because it honestly it slipped my mind. So basically the animator, we're referencing it with a string right now uh, when we update our animator movement parameters. And that's fine, but you can actually reference it in a way that uses slightly less memory. And this is very nitpicky, but a lot of people like to do it. And honestly, it's worth it, especially if you have a lot of things in the animator you're referencing. You would say vertical equals animator dot string to hash vertical. And then horizontal equals animator dot string to hash horizontal. This just basically saves that specific uh, parameter in the animator to that specific variable. And then instead of saying vertical here in, as a string, you just pass the vertical um, integer value. And then you pass, let's change the name so there's no conflicting naming conventions here. I'll say vertical amount and horizontal amount. And yeah, you just pass the vertical and horizontal here instead of passing the strings. And it just saves a little bit of memory. So if you're really picky about memory, it's a good thing to do. Um, why am I getting, oh, this is not supposed to be a float. It's supposed to be an integer. There we go. So yeah, you can pass the string like this in horizontal, or now you can pass the new variable that gets the string to hash. And we save that now, and that should be working. So we can drop in the game and test that. I have two errors first though. Okay, yeah, so where we're updating our movement parameters, we want to put a comma and then pass player dot player network manager dot is sprinting dot value. I'm going to save that. I think we got one more. And yes, it's over here where we're updating our movement parameters if we're a client. Uh, a note about network variables, if you didn't know, if I hadn't already said it, only the owner can modify them. So if you try to modify someone else's network variable, you will not be allowed. You will get an error. So let's save that. And also when a network variable is changed uh, on the owner's end, it is changed and reflected for everybody in the game. So now if I go into the game here now, I'm actually going to launch my second client and boot it up here in a second. But if you go into the game, you can see here I'm rolling and you can see here I'm playing the sprinting animation when I hold down the sprint button. It might be a little bit harder to see because the speeds aren't that adjusted right now. So I'm gonna go ahead actually and speed up the player's sprinting speed so it's very easy to see. So let's go to the player locomotion sprinting speed. I'm gonna change it to, we'll say, let's say eight or nine. Actually seven's fine, it's almost double. So I'm running and then I am sprinting. So running right now and now I'm sprinting. So you can see it's significantly faster and the animation does change. That's great. So now let's test it online and make sure it changes for a client. So I've went ahead here now, I'm gonna save the scene before I do this. I'm gonna open in a new editor, our clone. And here you see, I have a client connected. So he's running now and now he's sprinting. So you can see that is working as intended. Okay, so that is sprinting set up now and synced via the network. Excellent. So on the next video guys, we're going to make our stamina system we're gonna make a UI, we're gonna make stamina regeneration, we're gonna make stamina dependent actions, and we're gonna hook up basically our sprinting and our rolling and our backstepping to our new stamina system. And we're gonna make it so you can't perform actions that require stamina without having any stamina left. And we're also just going to make it so we can basically tweak the regeneration amounts and all that good stuff uh, how we want. And we're gonna make it so whenever we use stamina, it updates the UI bar accordingly. So. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. If you made it this far, please drop a like and leave a comment. I know I sound like a broken record, but you have no idea how much it helps the series, and I appreciate each and every one of you who take the time to do that. Also, a special thank you to my patrons. It's because of you guys, I get to keep doing this, and I love doing this. All right, guys, I'm excited for the next episode. I will see you next week.